Have you guys ever made the wrong decision in life knowing in your gut that it's a bad way to go? Maybe it was an urge or a temptation. I think we've all been there. Whether it's getting back together with an ex, changing your career path, or abusing substances or whatever it may be, this brings me to my topic for today's video. I was listening to the Alice in Chains song, Your Decision, the other day, and I was like, man, this song is such a great and underappreciated track. I need to talk about it and what the meaning is. But was this song written about Lane Staley specifically, or was it about something or someone else? You'll find out my thoughts in today's video. Now, I haven't done too many videos about the meaning behind songs, but I had done one on Angry Chair from Alice in Chains' sophomore record, 1992's Dirt. I think your decision offers a good contrast to the subject matter that Alice in Chains sang on about Dirt. Now, before I talk any further, I want to let you guys know that this is just my opinion. I'd love to hear what your guys' interpretation for the song and the music video is in the comment section below. Now, the song's lyrics in general paint a picture of someone who's making the wrong decision or decisions in life, knowing it's wrong but it's too late to make a change in life. Perhaps they're no longer alive, hence the lyric, time to change has come and gone. The decision or decisions are selfish, and they don't just destroy the person in question, but everybody around them as well, and that could be family and friends. Now, one thing I've read a lot of on YouTube in the comments section when it comes to watching videos about Alice in Chains is that every song is about drugs. This is a common misconception about the band. It was like when Dave Grohl first started Foo Fighters and people thought every song was about Nirvana or Kurt Cobain in some way. You don't really need to look too far to see that even some of Alice in Chains' more popular songs like Down in a Hole, Over Now, or Heaven Besides You are not about drugs but relationships. And looking at the lyrics for your decision, I do think it's fair to say that the song is, yeah, probably about addiction, but it could also be about a relationship or a relationship with addiction. Now, I recently watched a movie about the opiate crisis on Netflix called The Pharmacist, which is probably one of the best documentaries I've seen on Netflix, besides Tiger King. Now, they interviewed a woman who had overdosed, and she, unlike some people who've had near-death experiences, didn't see a white light. Instead, all she saw was black. This is what comes to mind when I hear the lyric, black inside. It could also suggest depression has led this person down the wrong path, turning to drugs and alcohol for escape. And I think while people can easily say the song is about Lane Staley, I think the song's meaning takes on multiple angles because after all, it wasn't just Lane who struggled with addiction in the band. Every original member of Alice in Chains struggled with addiction at one point in their career. A 1996 interview with Rolling Stone magazine said the following, In the summer of 1994, the day before the start of the tour of Metallica, Alice nearly reached the end of their chain. At the time, Staley was in the throes of heroin addiction and Kinney was struggling with the bottle. Guitarist Jerry Cantrell would tell the magazine in the same interview, We've just been going full force, just running at top speed with our eyes closed. We've been way too close for too long, and we were suffocating. We were like four plants trying to grow in the same pot. The article would go on to state, Things got worse when Staley, who according to Kinney had just returned from rehab, came to practice high. In response, Kinney threw down his sticks and vowed never again to play with Staley. Cantrell concurred and the tour was cancelled. And the band parted company for six months. Nobody was being honest with each other back then, admitted Kinney. If we had kept going, there would have been a good chance we would have self-destructed on the road, and we definitely didn't want that to happen in public. We lived in the same house and partied together and drank as much as each other, but when we started to split apart and went different ways, we felt like we were betraying each other. Now, one thing that wasn't mentioned in that article was original and ex-bassist Mike Starr. He would leave the group in 1993 because of his addiction and appear on Celebrity Rehab and pass away in 2011 due to his struggle. Now, Jerry Cantrell would also struggle with addiction until 2002-2003, while Sean Kinney wouldn't get sober until about 2006 or so. Here's a clip of Jerry Cantrell discussing his addiction and the moment that changed for him in 2003 during a Music Cares acceptance speech. Now, Music Cares is an organization which helps musicians struggling with addiction, the clip is followed by an interview with drummer Sean Kinney talking about his own addiction. And let's break down the song's lyrics and dive a bit deeper after the clip. Almost nine years ago and, uh, <clears throat> in Los Angeles and... Uh, Gee, how? <laughs> Sean was at the door with my brother. And uh, so my choices were open the door and go to rehab or jump out the back window down a cliff into some blackberry bushes. <laughs> That's the choice I took. So, luckily they caught me because I couldn't go anywhere. I was kind of stuck in a bush <clears throat> at the bottom of a cliff, bleeding, and I ended up here. So, I didn't intend to get here, but I'm very grateful 
that I am here. And it took a lot of people to help me get here. Moments where songs where we started like hitting on things that spoke to us more. And then uh, Do you dirt, dirt it definitely came together. I mean, whatever we were doing and all the things we were doing were working at that point. And then they quit working. And then? And then they quit working, you know? Yeah. Do you think so, yeah? Yeah, well, they didn't quit working, but they'd start working against you, you know? Some things open some doors, some things close some doors. We were all on the same page, you know, about where we were at, where we were at in life, and then it kind of started spinning out of control a little bit. Can you say, can you pinpoint, was it at the end of that album or the tour? That it, it was pretty much during that record, it was full on, and then, and it kind of stayed that way, you know? We uh, lived a pretty hard life. Until when, can you say? For well, you, maybe? Well, Lane's life ended from it. So, and uh, me, probably a few years ago. Yeah. A few years ago, so even after he died. Yeah. Now the opening line of the song could be interpreted as someone who was no longer with us. Keep in mind Mike Starr was alive in 2009 when the song was released, while Lane had passed away seven years prior. I think when something has gone, it isn't coming back, meaning it could be referring to something or someone being too late to change their lives. Perhaps Watch Your Fear Become Your God could be a reference to the fear of being a slave to something early on in your life and then having it become all-consuming. One day it's going to be too late for you to change, and that's the person's worst fear. Overwhelm, you chose to run. Apathetic to the stand. Now the second part of the verse, Overwhelm, you chose to run, apathetic to the stun. When I see this lyric, I always think of Lane. He retreated from his career in 1996 and became a recluse, allowing his addiction to be all-consuming. He was overwhelmed by his circumstances and his commitments. He hated fame and retreated. He also discussed the scourge of fame most notably in their 1994 song, Nutshell, which appeared on Jar of Flies. The stunned, I would imagine, would be the bandmates who were shocked by his decision. And in Lane's later years, it almost seems like the members of Alice in Chains weren't on good terms. I remember reading how Sean Kinney used to go to his house once or twice a month to talk to Lane, but Lane wouldn't let him into his place. Yes, it hurts to know you bond. Now, I would almost argue that the song would lend itself to be more about Mike Starr than Lane Staley. The lyrics that really stand out to me are, Yes, it hurts to know you're bought. Given that Mike Starr both released a book and appeared on Celebrity Rehab, this line could be a reference to that. No one plans to take the path that brings you lower. Now this lyric is really telling. No one starts out in life wanting to become an addict. It's something that finds you as life knocks you down and you succumb to the temptation of fame or just difficulties in dealing with stuff. I remember in the pharmacist documentary they stated how after Hurricane Katrina many people who were impacted by the hurricane turned to drugs to cope. In this way, the lyric is showing some sympathy to the subject to say it could have happened to any one of us. Now again, one could construe this to be about either Mike Starr or Lane Staley, or maybe it's just about a relationship. I think the most telling lyrics are It's Over, which I think could be either Lane saying to his bandmates, Alice in Chains is over. In fact, many people would think that even today, Alice in Chains can't exist without Lane and the band died when he died. Now we have to look at the music video itself, which paints a portrait of both temptation and I think possibly corporate greed. I don't know if anyone else has caught this, but I'm sure you guys have, but the business card at the beginning of the video shows the address 1023 Corinthians Drive. Now this card refers to the Bible passage which states, everything is permissible but not everything is beneficial, everything is permissible but not everything is constructive. Now this Bible passage refers to the guidelines about eating meat, which has been offered as a sacrifice to idols. I think the passage takes on a few meanings, and I think it doesn't entirely mean eating meat in the context of the song. It has more to do with life decisions. I think the later part of the video really sums up the lyrics of the song. The model walks down the hallway from room to room showing various acts of debauchery, while each member of the band can be seen in the background looking uninterested. I've always interpreted this to mean that these guys have succumbed to temptation before, and they know what lies on the other side, 
and they don't want to give in to it again, and they're no longer tempted by it. As the camera further follows the model down the hallway, you see other people who are taken in by temptation. And then, of course, the model is half-dressed on the bed, which perfectly exemplifies temptation and paints a perfect picture of why some people can't say no. It eventually leads to a situation where they are exploited or eaten, as shown in the scene with the older man eating their meal. I think all the people who succumbed to temptation in the video soon turned into dinner for the men at the table. In the end, addiction eats you alive. So what does the band have to say about the song? Now, During an interview for the behind the scenes making of the video for Your Decision, singer William Duvall stated that the song is all about choices and their consequences. Consequences, you know, it's your decision. You've got to sleep in the bed you make. You know, things happen and it's just funny how one left or one little right turn in your life can just totally take you off on a tangent and unanticipated you know. While drummer Sean Kenny offered his own take saying, I've taken a lot of lefts and a lot of rights. I'm sure we all have and you've got to deal with it when you're there. Now the main takeaway of the song seems to be sadness at seeing someone become an addict who can't get clean. At the same time, the singer is sympathetic to how easy it is to walk on the dark path because they have been there too. Yet the overall mood of the song seems to be that they are angry at the person for becoming an addict to escape their overwhelming life. The song ends on a bitter note and seems to suggest that an addict's friends are the ones who really get screwed over in the end. Here you stand before us all and say it's over, it's over. So that's my two cents guys. I'd love to hear what your guys' thoughts are on the song as well. Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching guys. Be sure to like button and subscribe. If you guys want to support my channel, simply watch another video. Take care.